The Plurex drainage system lets you drain fluid at home and on your own schedule, so you can manage fluid buildup before it becomes too uncomfortable. Using the Plurex system is easy and straightforward. This video will reinforce the training you received from your doctor or nurse if a Plurex catheter was placed in your chest or abdomen to drain fluid buildup. The drainage procedure is the same whether the Plurex catheter is in your chest or abdomen. Before you begin, read the full instructions for use that come with the drainage kits and follow these instructions every time you drain fluid. This is the Plurex catheter. Part of the catheter stays inside your body, either in your chest or in your abdomen. There are holes in this portion of the catheter that allow fluid to enter. The white cuff in the middle is part of the internal portion of the catheter and should not be visible outside your body. The end of the catheter stays outside your body so you can drain fluid. A valve on the end of the catheter helps keep fluid from leaking. It also prevents air from entering the catheter. You'll drain your fluid into Plurex drainage bottles specifically designed for use with your Plurex catheter. These bottles come in two sizes, 500 milliliters and 1000 milliliters. Preparation and use of each bottle is the same regardless of size. The active vacuum technology in the Plurex bottles provides suction for drainage and allows you to place the bottle wherever it is most convenient during each drainage procedure. The drainage bottle features a drainage line, which you will connect to your catheter when you drain. The color of the fluid drained may vary. The Plurex bottles come in a drainage kit that is easy to use. The kit contains the sterile items you need to drain at home, including gloves, a new valve cap for the catheter, alcohol pads, gauze, a foam pad, and a sterile dressing. The kit also contains a blue emergency slide clamp. This clamp should be used only in an emergency to close the catheter if it is somehow cut or damaged. See the instructions for use for more information and notify your nurse or doctor immediately if you decide it is necessary to use the emergency clamp. You should drain as directed by your doctor, usually every one to two days. Do not change frequency or drain more fluid than your doctor has recommended without first consulting your doctor. Before beginning each drainage procedure, remove any rings and wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water for a full minute, even though you'll wear gloves during the drainage procedure. Dry your hands using clean paper towels. Remove the dressing from the area around the catheter and discard it. If you notice any redness or swelling around the catheter, any fluid leaking, or if the white cuff is visible on the outside of your body, continue the drainage procedure and then call your doctor or nurse to report what you see. After you've removed the dressing, wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water again for a full minute. Make sure you have a clean, clear area on a table or counter to serve as your workspace. You will want to arrange all of the supplies prior to beginning each drainage procedure. First, open the drainage kit bag and remove the procedure pack. Next, open the procedure pack and remove the blue wrapped bundle and adhesive dressing. Set the adhesive dressing aside and place the blue bundle on your workspace with the folded side up. Carefully unfold the blue wrapping by pulling on the outer edges of the bundle. The items inside are sterile, so avoid touching them. The inside of the blue wrapping provides a clean work area. Remove the drainage bottle and connected drainage line from the bag and set the bottle on the table next to the blue wrapping. Remove the tape from the drainage line and set the covered access tip on the blue wrap near the other items. Make sure you keep the access tip on the drainage line sterile by not touching it and keeping it away from other objects. The access tip should touch only the blue wrapping. If the cover has fallen off the access tip, do not touch the tip with your hands or anything non-sterile. Pick up a glove by the wrist and pull it on. Put on the second glove, holding it by the wrist. Both gloves fit either hand. Keep your gloves away from non-sterile items such as skin or clothing. 
Next, peel open the pouch with the valve cap and carefully let the cap fall onto the blue wrapping. You'll use the cap after you have finished draining. Finally, open all three alcohol pads and place them on the blue wrapping, but do not remove the pads from their pouches. You are now ready to prepare the drainage line and catheter for draining fluid. Tightly squeeze the clamp on the drainage line to completely close it. This clamp prevents drainage from starting until you're ready. Pick up the drainage line near the tip, twist the cover, and pull the cover off. Set the exposed tip back on the sterile blue wrapping. Holding the catheter near the end, remove and discard the cap from the end of the catheter. Use an alcohol pad to clean around the opening, but don't try to clean the inside. Don't put anything except the drainage line tip inside the end of the catheter. This could damage the valve and allow air to enter or fluid to leak. Do not use scissors or other sharp objects near the catheter. And always remember to keep the valve on the end of the catheter clean and away from other objects to avoid contamination. While holding the catheter, pick up the drainage line near the access tip and gently insert the tip into the end of the catheter. You may feel and hear a small click when they securely connect. Plurex drainage bottles use active vacuum technology that provides suction to automatically drain the fluid. The support clip on the drainage bottle maintains the foil vacuum seal until you're ready to break it. To open the seal, steady the bottle with one hand and remove the support clip with the other hand. Hold and push the white T plunger straight down to puncture the foil seal. Remember that the white clamp on the drainage line is still closed. To begin draining, slowly release the clamp. Fluid will start to flow into the vacuum bottle. You can adjust the flow by squeezing or releasing the pinch clamp as desired. Drainage usually only takes 5 to 15 minutes. It is normal to feel some discomfort, pain, or even coughing when draining fluid. If you do experience discomfort or pain when draining, clamp the drainage line to slow or stop the flow of fluid for a few minutes. If you don't feel better after doing this, the pain is severe, or you have worsening shortness of breath, contact your doctor or nurse. Although rare, pain may be an indication of infection. The flow into the bottle may slow down when the fluid is almost completely drained. It is normal to feel some discomfort as the rate of flow decreases or stops. This is a sign that you have completed your drainage. When you're finished draining, or if the bottle is full, squeeze the pinch clamp on the drainage line completely closed. If you need to use a second bottle, Disconnect the drainage line and follow the instructions for connecting a new bottle. You do not need to clean the catheter tip between bottles. Do not drain more than 1,000 milliliters from your chest at any one time. Do not drain more than 2,000 milliliters from your abdomen at any one time. When drainage is complete, Disconnect the drainage bottle from the catheter by holding the drainage line near the access tip and the catheter near the end. Then, pull the access tip out of the catheter. Clean around the opening of the catheter using a new alcohol pad and twist the new cap into place until you feel a slight click as the cap locks. Clean the skin around the catheter using the last alcohol pad. Place the foam pad around the catheter. Wind the catheter in loops and hold it on top of the foam pad. Then, place the gauze pads over the catheter. The self-adhesive dressing has three layers. A clear, shiny plastic covering, a clear, thin dressing, a two-piece white paper backing. Remove your gloves before applying the adhesive dressing. Peel the larger of the two pieces of paper from the back of the adhesive dressing. Center the dressing over the gauze pads making sure the adhesive makes contact with the skin all around the foam and gauze pads. Press the dressing down. Remove the thicker, shiny plastic covering from the adhesive dressing by starting at one of the paper backing's corners. Bend the covering back, 
and pinch the paper and the thin dressing to separate them from the cover. The thin dressing should remain attached to the paper backing during this step. Next, peel off the thicker plastic covering. Finally, remove the remaining paper and press the dressing down. Record the volume, color, and appearance of fluid drained on the drainage chart. To empty the bottle, push down on the white T plunger and move it in a circle to increase the size of the opening in the foil seal. Release the pinch clamp on the drainage line to release any vacuum left in the bottle. Then, re-clamp the drainage line completely. To open the bottle, remove the flexible cap with the drainage line attached. Place your thumb on the edge of the cap and push sideways and down into the bottle opening to loosen the cap from the rim. Grasp the cap and pull it away from the bottle top, facing away from you, to avoid any splashing. Empty the bottle into the toilet or sink. Then, place the bottle along with the drainage line tubing in a plastic bag, seal it tightly, and discard it in the trash bin. Used Plurex bottles cannot be recycled. Be sure to read the full instructions for use that come with the Plurex drainage kits before you drain. The instructions also include answers to frequently asked questions. If it is an option for you, consider asking a family member or caregiver to learn how to assist you with the procedure. It may be easier with an extra set of hands, although it is not necessary. For more information, visit carefusion.com slash patient.